Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, can I have a bit more light so I can see you guys' faces? Yeah, because uh, I'm scared when I talk to the black. <laughs> um, it was a wonderful talk. I was sitting there, I was touched and moved. It reminds me a lot of things that happened to me. Uh, but I'm, uh, first I would say I'm not a talented person. And I'm not well trained. And I have a lot of different, I never listen to everybody, my teachers and my mother say, you should have to do this. I say, no, 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 I would never do that. Not like uh, Paul said, everything his coach told him, he listened and he believed it. And to me, everything I heard on the media, everything I heard from people talking, it takes me two or three seconds to think about, is that true? Can I do different? This is something that I've been trained for years, I trained myself to do that. I'm not telling a person that I failed many, many times. I probably, I tried seven years in a primary school. Normal student, five years of primary school. Because my school was too bad. They say it's too bad because we, everybody tried to enter the university, or enter good middle school, and we all failed. And I was one of the failed, failure person. And I filled for key middle school, key high schools. I filled three times for the universities. And I applied for jobs and all, I think like 30 times jobs, all filled. I remember when I graduated from high school, I filled the university and looking for a job in a KFC. 24 people went and 23 accepted. I was the only one not accepted. <laughs> and then I tried to be a policeman. Five classmates went, four accepted, I was turned down. And when we started the business for Alibaba, I tried to raise money. I went to Silicon Valley, talking to venture capitalists. So, over 30 of them, none of them accept us and give us the money. But I think the very interesting thing that I do is that because so many mistakes we made, that trained me. Every mistake every setbacks, every time people refuse us, I take this as a training course. And I don't think that um, today when people say, I'm disappointed because I'm rejected by this company, or I'm rejected, I feel. To me, I think if you are rejected by people, that's very natural. If you're accepted by people, that's not natural. Right? <clears throat> when I start the business, try to sell my products, Every day I have a lot of cold, cold calls go out to meeting customers. I tell myself before I go up, today I will, I'm going to meet 12 customers. I will have no chance to win. Not even one chance. And then when I came back, there's no chance. I say, see how good I am. I know there was no chance. If I got a one, I say I would do better than I expected. So every time, every mistake we make, it's a great treasure. Of your, of, of your future succeed. And I would say today there are a lot of books about Jack Ma, about Alibaba. But none of the books I read for myself, I wrote myself. I don't want, I don't think I should write a book. Because when I, somebody starts to write a book for himself, his old is going to retire. But if do, one day I do want to write a book, I want to write a book, the name is Alibaba 1000 with mistakes. It's the mistakes that make us different. Every time we learn and every mistake we make, we check ourselves. I find a lot of people feel, always think, ah, I feel because of that guy's fault. Every mistake we make, every time we feel, it's our fault, it's my fault. And how we can correct, how can we do better next time? I start to share a lot of my experience and ideas with many entrepreneurs in China. I want to tell them the thing they should learn is the failure stories of the others. My training course is the failure experience. You know, I was not trained to be a high school, I was, I was trained to be a high school teacher. I never got a one day training in a business school. Luckily, I'm, I was not trained to be an MBA school student. Um, I sent a lot of young people went to MBA schools past the years. 
They were very smart before they go. When they came back, they're all stupid. Because <laughs> they think, this is a professor thing, this is an economist thing, this is, you know, we should do that. Because they were so active in thinking, but when they came back, they're like a frozen. And the school that I'm setting up in China for teaching entrepreneurs and helping entrepreneurs, most of the case studies are the case studies that is a failure stories. Why people fail. Most people fail. It's just like going to business, it's like going to the battlefield. Only those people who survive, they are the winners. So when you go to the business field, you have to learn what are the mistakes the other people make. And don't worry, I think most of the mistakes, ah, how stupid that guy is, how can you make a mistake like that? You will. You will. So I try to teach myself, I read many, many case studies that why people feel. And constantly conscious, this guy is so smart, if he feel in this way, why I have a chance to win? So the more you learn about that, that will make you more, more positive. And the other thing I want to share with you guys is that always just use your own mind to think. The difference between you, the other, your education, your background, your experience are so, for, so different. So you, always, you should not always follow the others, but follow your own rules. I, uh, when I compete with those people who are very experienced and old, I say, Wait, give me 30, 30 years. When he's getting old, I have my chance. When I compete with people who are rich, can do anything, I say, yes, let's compete 15 years later. I prepare now. So, always you have a chance to win. If you really, and the, I'm lucky enough to meet a lot of people in this world. They're very successful people. Uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, is, and even Steve Jobs, and and. and a lot of people. I found those people who succeed successful, they have some wonderful characters, like uh, Usain Bolt. They are optimistic. They never complain. If you are not optimistic, you have no chance to win, right? And if you complain, well, when I complain a lot when I was young, I say, well, when I want to do some software, Bill Gates did it. When I do this, and that guy did, right? When you, when I, you want to have some uh, fried chicken, KFC did better than we did. <laughs> and we always try to be as successful as Bill Gates. It's impossible. There's only one Bill Gates. A lot of people say, well, Bill Gates did not finish Harvard, so I should leave Harvard. There's only one Bill Gates. So, I think those people, they are always very optimistic. They always see the brighter future. And even also, they never complain. Because when people complain, they are losing opportunities. They are blind their mind. So later I learned, where is the opportunity is? The world is full of opportunity if the world is full of complaining people. If you can solve the, the, the problem that people complain, that's the great opportunity. And I find many of my friends in the high school, universities, I met them year, these years, the only thing I find that they are still complaining. Well, don't laugh. We have a lot of people complaining in this world. That's why those people never make progress. And we have to say, when you complain, think about how can you solve this problem. So, <clears throat> I think the world is changing so fast. You cannot stop it. This is the best time and this is also the worst time. But it depends on how is your attitude. I think it is the best time of the century. The human beings have never been that lucky at this time. When, they, when you see a financial crisis, you have this, you have that, you have all kinds of problems. But what, what I see is it's the signal, it's the symbol that is something big is happening. And we are lucky at this age, at this moment, we are there. The first, I say, the three technology revolution all fundamentally changed the world. The first the technology revolution, the industry technology revolution, changed the world. Those people who live there, lucky. The second technology revolution, 
Also, the NH giving a lot of opportunities to human lives. This is the third. And we are lucky. And every technology revolution comes, there is a huge turbulence of the society. It's going to kill a lot of jobs. It's going to create a lot of jobs. And believe me, there is one thing I studied. Every technology revolution takes about 50 years. The first 20 years is about technology. The next 30 years is about utilize of this technology, application of this technology. So the first one that, second one that, this one third. The internet has just passed 20 years. The next 30 years are so critical to any country, to anybody. Whether you like it or don't like it, a lot of great jobs today you think is a great job is going to lose. Something new is happening. Something interesting is happening. So if you call last 20 years, it's got internet technology. Next 30 years, it's got internet of time. And this is something that I'm calling on a lot of young people. I said, please pay attention to those people who are below 30 years old. And next 30 years, and pay attention to those companies who are less than, fewer than 30 people. And I think why one of the reasons Alibaba succeed is 20 years, uh, 19 years ago when we started the business, especially 15 years ago when we started the Taobao, the B2C model. No, it's all difficult to convince successful people to use your service, especially if it is a new service. Nobody wants to try it. And those people who are not successful, want to be successful, will help you. So one of the focus that some U.S. companies, when they come to China, they touch the successful people. And we think we should help those unsuccessful people. We should focus on young people. At that time, they were 15 years old and 18 years old. In the old China, in the old history, if you convince the older people, young people follow. Today, if you convince the young people, the parents follow. If you change the young people, you change the future. If you believe the future, then believe the young people. So 15 years ago, we spent most of our time on educating, working with those people who below 20 years old. Now, they are 35. They are getting more influential. They think of buy things online. They think of shopping online. They think do business online. This is, they take it for granted. So we think, give them another 10, 15 years, they will become the ministers. They will become the presidents. And at that time, the world is going to change. So this is what we believe. And I want to tell, share all the young people here, that it's your time. The world, a lot of people are complaining because the internet destroyed a lot of business. It's not internet destroyed a lot of business. It's the backward thinking, attitude, close themselves, want to keep yesterday these thinkings that destroy themselves. And I want to say that every tech, people say technology killing jobs. No, every technology revolution create more jobs than people thought. But they create different jobs. This is, this is us, this is the opportunity. For China and Asia, I think there will be several new technology, several new trends that is going to change the world. I say new retail, new financing and new technology, new manufacturing, and new energy. These five new things is, is going to happen, is going to change everybody, every industry, every business in the next 10 to 20 years. What is new retail? So today, e-commerce in China grow that fast. The traditional retail does not work very well. One of the reasons why Chinese e-commerce grows so fast Faster than the USA, because the USA traditional retail was so good. The infrastructure of business was so good, so internet cannot go inside. But in China, the traditional retail is not good. I think Malaysia, Indonesia, the same. Because that is no good. So internet become the key technology. We use the internet to improve the new retail that grows so fast. So I said e-commerce in America, at that time, it was like a dessert in China become the main course. 
What is a new retail? The new retail means online and offline plus logistic together. Working together, it's going to be a new retail. So in ten, in next 10, 15 years, there will be no online business, offline business. It's all going to be online, offline, working together. That is the future. And what is the new manufacturing? In the last two centuries, right? The manufacturing means scalability. Large skills standard. Because when you say Walmart, right, you have an assembly line, you have a standard and cheaper labor cost. I think this century is tailor made. Everything should be tailor made and smart made. And a lot of things are going to change. When you put an operating system in a phone, making phone calls is only 20% of the use. 80% of the use of the mobile phone today has nothing to do with make, making phone calls. Imagine if we put an operating system in a car, if we put an operating system in a lights or in, in any refrigerator washing machine, the world is going to change. And everything is going to produce them. So the new manufacturing is going to change a lot of industry. Today, if your industry is based on assembly line, standard, and large scale, low cost, low value, low price, you have no future. And the third, new financing. In the past 200 years, the financial institute is trying to focus on 2018 ways. They, they, everything they do, everything they design is for 20% of the big companies, multinational companies, rich companies. They do not care about the 80% of the companies or consumers, small business that don't have any financial institute, financial support. So the new financing is using the data technology, using new technology to empower those 80% of the small business consumers that never be able to reach. This is the internet is going to change. And I'm sure that a lot of the big banks, traditional banks, will cry for that. Today, they are not made for those 80% of the markets, 80% of consumers. And this wave is going to be coming much faster than you think. The mobile technology, mobile payment. Today in India, right, only within two years, our partner there has already used a mobile phone to pay 200 million people using mobile phone to pay and get the money. So if you're using traditional ways, it's almost impossible within two years. So the new financial institution is going to change. The new financial system is going to change the world. The next is about new technology. Well, in Asia, we lost the IT. Today, we're in the DT. I say from IT technology, IT time to DT time. It's not Donald Trump time. The data time. It's totally different concept. IT is to make yourself strong, to enable yourself. DT is to enable the others. DT is so powerful. So the IT time that Asia lost our chance. We don't have IBM, we don't have a Microsoft, we don't have a Cisco, we don't have a Intel chips. But on the DT time, we have a chance to win. And I think Asia and small business, especially those countries with low IT technology, it's a chance for us. A mobile phone today is much more powerful than a powerful PC computer 20 years ago. And look at the Asia, look at the Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines. So many farmers are using mobile phones. If we can use the mobile technology, collect the data, things are going to be changed. So how we should put efforts, not following the IT way, but doing following the DT way. What is the mobile technology? What is the data technology? What is artificial intelligence or machine learning? These are the things I think Asian people can have the great opportunity to win. And then finally, I would call say, but not least, this is uh, the new energy. The first the technology revolution, the energy is coal. The second technology revolution, the energy is oil. What is the energy of next century or this century? That is data. Without data, nothing can be done. And I want to say, tell all the young people here, 
Do not complain that you don't have the chance, like opportunity, like your father. Your father may not have the chance like these five news. If you start to learn, if you start to move, make up now, start to prepare now, you may succeed in ten years. You will never be succeed tomorrow. But if you prepare, you have a chance. If you believe the future, if you believe this technology, if you believe this technology revolution is going to change the world, start to do now. 10, 15 years then. What you have today is not designed by yesterday. It's designed by 15 years ago, your effort. So your 15 years later, your life is designed by your today's decision and effort. So this is what I believe. And I'm, uh, I'm not like a bold. I think, I think one thing that I always think, we cannot decide which family you were born. If you happen to be born in a Bill Gates family, you're lucky. But not, you don't have chance. But you, we cannot decide where we're born, but we can decide where we die, what, how we want to die. If you want to die in a prison, it's simple. If you die in a, in a, in a decent, in a lot of friends, also you have to make a lot of friends. You have to change your character, value system, these, these the things. And I know I'm not going to die in my office. I'm going to retire and die on the beaches. <laughs> Life is not a bad word. Life, you come to this world, it's a journey. All right? I believe we come to this world for holiday. All right, the other thing I want to change is that uh, whether you like it or don't like it, this transformation is, change, is moving much faster than you thought. A lot of things are going to change. As I said, the white color, today's white color today is going to be, is going, a lot of jobs are going to disappear. So you see, you are, you are data analysis. So if you say, I'm learning data, so I'm going to do data analysis because this is going to be a hot job. I tell you, there will be no data analysis next to 10 years. The machine is going to do much, do much better job than you are. In the past 20 years, we make people like a machine. Next 20 years, we will make machine like a people. Machine is going to be more powerful, smart than people. And I think I told my team eight years ago, I said, in 30 years, the best CEO of, this, of, of that year, of the cover man of Time Magazine, will be a machine. You like it, don't like it. Let's wait and see if we can live for 30 years. Because in the past centuries, people focus, the business focus on manufacturing. And next to 30 years, people business should focus on creativity. So because of that, a lot of things should be changed. Let's change the education. Let's change the way we teach the kids. I think we should put not only the knowledge, machine can remember knowledge much faster. I said to a lot of people, say, when we compete, who is smarter? We say, well, this guy recite, you know, can, can remember every words, every poems, every sentences. He's very smart in remembering. I tell you, machine can remember better than you do. And those guys who can calculate faster, machine can calculate faster than you are. Machine never get angry, never get tired. They can always do a better job than you are. So if you in the future want to compete with the machine who is more knowledgeable, you have no chance to win. How we can compete with a machine? I think we should teach our kids culture, value. These are the things that human can always win the machines. That is why we should teach the kids. There are two things I think the kid the education focus on. Imagination and creativity. And teamwork. These are the things that we should teach our kids. We should teach our kids music. We should teach our kids sports. Sports make the teacher, the kids understand what is teamwork. Music make people understand music and painting make kids understand what's imagination, creativity. So if we do not start to change the education, the way the thing we teach the education we are going to be in big trouble. Our kids will always complain. It's not their fault, it's our fault if we don't start to do it. 
So we, I believe, in the future, it's not about the competition of knowledge. It's about competition of wisdom, of experience. How can you survive in such a mobile, such a mobile, such a complicated, sophisticated world? And I say today, people are worried because machine getting smarter. They play chess. You know, they play go better than human beings. So, oh my God, what I'm gonna do? I never worry about that. Why don't worry about that? Machine. I don't like the artificial intelligence. The world artificial intelligence AI. For me, AI means Alibaba inside. It's not a. It's not artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. If you try to teach a machine to do things. That human being can do. It's just an insult of the people. Machine supposed to do the things that a human being cannot do. That is something we should do. So I believe it's not artificial intelligence. It should be machine intelligence. Do something that people that machine people cannot do. Human being cannot do. Like a cars. We know car can run faster than human being, but we never make a car like a like a human being. If you make the wheels like this, car can never run fast. Wheel is a wheel, and human being do not have the wheels. So let's do something that is different. And calculation, big data, and all these things, we have to know very clear that human being. I'm an optimist. Human being will always win machines. Don't worry too much about that. I never worry about the things most of scientists worry about. I never worry about the things prime ministers worry about. I only worry about things I worry about. Because <laughs> in Alibaba, I have already enough things to worry about every day. <laughs> the next thing I want to say is that the business people here, young entrepreneurs, I heard young people talking about. I was,、oh, I don't have a chance like Lee Kaohsiung. I don't have a chance like Mr. Cork. I don't have a chance like that. I tell you one thing. They may not have a chance like you at that time called entrepreneur. What is entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, to my understanding, is social scientist plus artist. You have to be a social scientist. You understand a human being. You understand the behavior. Then there's need. You know, change yourself, and you should be very artistic. How do you make the team? The reason why Jack Ma succeed is not because I'm that smart. Because I'm a great people, I know how to work with them. And the great people and I will know how to understand the society. What's the need? So, if you want to be a company to be more successful, you have to sure what big problem you solve for society. The big problem you solve the society, the big opportunity is, and the more successful you will be. If you solve the problem for your own village, it's a village company. If you solve the problem from a province, your provincial company. If you solve the problem from the nation, your nation company. This is the responsibility. Depends on how you can work on that. And what is entrepreneur is going to transform? Entrepreneur is going to transfer to netpreneur, net entrepreneurs. I believe at least ninety percent of the business in next twenty thirty years will be online. If you do not know how to do business online, normally do a small bit in a business. If you are small, tiny business, you can only do the local village. But if you, the size of a business depends one of depends the 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 the, the reach of your region. So today, when you use the internet, you can reach the other part of the world, cross the nations, cross the provinces. You understand? It's about respect the other culture. Create value for the other people. So I think next thirty years, it's not the the world of internet companies. It's the world of those company who can using internet better. And this is the opportunity for us. You don't have to know technology, but you have to know how to use the technology, leverage the technology. I'm not trained to be an engineer. Up to now, I still cannot understand. Why computer can operate? Because I, I don't know. I mean, it's okay you don't know. You respect the people who know about it, right? Let those people who know about it. And then I was, for the first five years, I was the、uh, product tester of the company. Because、uh, we work for small business. Most of the small business in the world, they 
are scared of the high technology. When they think about high technology, they don't want to do it. So I'm with the te product tester. When the engineers finish the thing, I will use it. If I cannot use it, I say 80% of people cannot use it. Just to throw the rubbish. If I can use it, it's a good product. <laughs> and I don't want to read, um, read, read any manuals. I just want to dump, click, get what you want. And people talk about, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you have to have money. No, nah, not necessarily. It's not the money make the difference. If money can make the difference, there's no chance for us. One of the key reasons why Alibaba survived for the first 10, 15 years, because we don't have money. I mean, for the first five years. We did not raise money as much as that, the, the other companies. We using every money, every cent, very, very careful. Most of the companies at the bubble period, they, not, they die not because they don't have money, because they have too much money. When you have a lot of money, you want to have a fancy offices. When you have a lot of money, you want to hire those people who are good and famous in the big companies. If, you're not, if your company is not ready, hire good people, hire some uh, multinational companies, professionals, you are killing yourself. Don't do that. It's just like if you put a Boeing 747 engine in a poor tractor, it's going to destroy your tractor. And both sides are frustrated. I made a lot of mistakes on that. So when you don't have money, you will not make stupid mistakes like that. And the best people is not outside your company. The best people are always in your own company. They believe in you. They believe the ideas. And spend time on that. A lot of people love to spend money on the equipment and machines, but not spending money on their people. And the spending money on the people, training them, giving them opportunities, and share with them the mistakes, listen to their mistakes, working together. That will make you really good. And I will say, people say, wow, how can Alibaba have that many talents? I tell you what, 15 years ago, when we start the business for the first three years, we cannot hire people. People say, oh, internet, oh, Alibaba, such a strange name, right? And, and no money, no fan, no reputation. So we said we hire people so difficult. So that we only hire those people if they're not that much disabled, we hire them. <laughs> they joined the company, and uh, years later when we got something and people get more powerful, they start to hatch hunt, you know, head hunting us. They take our good talents. And those people who were good, they were all head hunted. Those people were not good. They have nobody to head hunt them, them and they steal the company, become very successful. <laughs> to my understanding, those today, the best training, people, ah, oh, he's an expert of internet. He's even today, before the data time comes, we already got a lot of data experts. I don't know, where are the data experts? Right? So, I think to the, nobody is expert of the future. The expert of the future is you yourself spending time and learning from all those sufferings. So, this is what I believe. And in the future, if you, I, I believe that, you know, IQ, EQ, right? If you want to be successful, you should have EQ. But if you want not lose, you should have IQ. Remember, that's the difference, right? You want to be successful, you have to be EQ. Because those people, EQ good, easy to get, deal, get the deal down, understand people, working with the people. But... A lot of people make mistakes because of their lack of IQ. But no matter how smart you are, the world, the other people are always smarter than you are. So if you want to have the best IQ, hire good people. It's the people, and work with them, it's the people that improve in your IQ. And the third, I want, if you want to be respected. A lot of people make money, but never got respect. We have a lot of these people. That is the LQ, the Q of love.
So these cues are very, very important for anybody if you want to be successful. IQ, EQ, and Q of love. All right. The other thing is that the world is changing. I think in the future, next to 30 years, it's not about the. It's not a competition of muscles. It's not even competition of knowledge. It's a competition of the user experience. It's competition about the care of the others. It's a competition that how you can enable your employees, how can you can enable your others, the customers, and the women are going to be more and more important. One of the secret source of our company is women. We got a 47% of the employees in our company are women. 33% of the senior management are women. I never thought it was something strange. One day there is an American journalist come to our company and say, Jack, why are there so many women in your company? I say, is that? I never realized that. Because we never think of a man and women. Internet is about how you can perform behind the internet. And the very interesting thing is that if you have a lot of engineers and don't have those creative uh, care for others, people like women, women care the other people much more than men. Right? Men care for their own power, promotion, pay. They say, well, I don't know. So, but women, they care for them, care for the kids, the parents, the husband, and me, my work. And they know how to change themselves to making sure the other people are good. If you have that quality, you have a chance to win. So I think women leaders in the 21st century is going to be like that. Not only leaders in the politician, but leaders in the business field, culture, everywhere. And I strongly believe that. If you want to be a company can be sustainable, please hire more women. I'm not talking like a politician. I prove it by our company. We probably the the company in China in the world, the high tech company, have close to 50 percent of the employees of women. 33 percent of the senior management of women. And by the way, we got more than 50 percent of the power sellers online are women. The power sellers. If you traditional ways, women have no chance. But the online, people only care whether you serve them better or not. They do not, oh, it's a woman. <laughs> All right, finally, before we open the questions, because I have a lot of things to share with you. Sorry for my, for I talked that long, because when I have a chance to talk to entrepreneurs, I just feel that I can talk to myself. I feel a lot more comfortable when I talk to the small business, and young entrepreneurs. Because when I talk to investors, I got a headache. <laughs> but when I talk to entrepreneurs, I feel that we are talking to, the, we are the same animals. When we talk to, big, talk to big companies, they talk about competition, revenues, and profit, and you know. But when we talk to these small business, we talk about the dream. We talk about team. We talk about customers. All right, so finally, this technology revolution is very scary. It depends on how we use it. How we're working up together to solve big social problems. The first technology revolution changed the world, but the result was the first world war. The second technology revolution also influenced the world. The result is second world war. Now we are attending the third technology revolution. The first technology revolution made the people physical, arm, leg, and stronger, machine. Second technology revolution, people start long distance, train, planes, and you know, they want to get more, get more greedy. They go to the space, go to the moon. But this technology revolution, this time, is the inside the world. People should know themselves. Today, we go to the moon, we try to be on the Mars, but we never see the inside of the human beings. So I think this revolution is the liberation of the brains. If we do not deal with it carefully, it will be big trouble for the world. So the third world war will happen.
But this war is not against each other. This was supposed working together, the war against poverty, the war against weather, environment, and the war against disease. These things, if we can use in the technology data, people will be better. So I think the internet, the e-commerce, in the next 30, 40 years, if you want to make your business helping others, that the business world is going to be inclusive. The business world is going to be sustainable and make people happy and healthier. That's the future. And your business will be great. So I call happy and health are the double H strategy. This is all human being want. Everything you do because of the data and technology, if you can make your people, your team, your customer, the world happy and healthier and sustainable, it's going to be big.